my friends, welcome. This is Archangel. So, <laughs> a little bit of drama has happened in the last week, huh? However, the unacknowledged truth about this entire election is that it was all about gender, about sex. People are simply flabbergasted by the outcome. Everyone and their mother was assuming that Hillary had it made. And the fact that most everybody assumed her victory, this spoke to the background theme of females taking over everything in society. The fact that huge numbers of people were excited and slated her to win, despite the fact that she broke rules, whether because she was ignorant or crooked, despite the fact she represented the status quo establishment, despite the hijinks that went on in the Democratic National Party to get her the nomination over Bernie Sanders, despite all the corruption and chicanery of this person, shenanigans that would have landed any normal peasant in jail, the ignoring of all this demonstrates that people only wanted her because she is female. Now, the fact that Trump won is not some upholding of male authority continuity, but rather people at the last second took a chance and bet on the long shot, the political outsider. This was a statement saying that people are tired of corruption in government. And so this historic upset was more an endorsement of someone with the guts to clean house. This really was a rejection election, rejection of the status quo, rejection of impotency and corruption of the government. It was not an endorsement of male worth or sovereignty. It was simply a gamble, taking a chance on someone who has never been a politician, someone who speaks frankly and does not candy coat BS in political speak, someone with a fresh eye who it is hoped will upend the establishment since he has never been a member of Club Fed. This was a proclamation that people are so frayed with everything that they are willing to take a long shot on an outsider rather than swallow more of the status quo. Ross Perot, he ran on the same platform of being a rich entrepreneur outsider that would upend Washington. He was simply too early. Society simply needed a few more years of suffering, misery, and strife for people to get to the point in 2016 where they were willing to take a chance on an outside bet. I will say that I too am surprised by the results. However, for male empowerment, it's not time for champagne and cupcakes because this is not some grand victory. This is another point of misandry escalation. This will only solidify male devaluation and male contempt in the eyes of the vaginasty. You see, despite all the examinations of what happened and of all the poll numbers, the overwhelming majority of females voted for Hillary and white males voted for Trump. That right there tells the story. It is a war of sex, and it was from the get-go. In my little neck of the woods, I spoke to many people on election day, and anecdotally, the females and a surprising number of males said that when they got into the booth, they voted for Hillary because she was female. <laughs> you hear that? Simply because she was female. She might have been as crooked as a $6 bill and committed acts that were tantamount to treason, yet she was female. And that little tidbit right there plays out the female infantilization narrative. Females commit negative actions, yet they are spared repercussion. Oh, the poor little thing. She didn't know she was selling her position and influence to the highest bidder. It wasn't her fault. But high treason on any male's part? Oh, yeah! Hang him from the nearest tree. Now, the fact that Trump won might be cause for hope. Not hope for governance. The government, much like the media and corporate world, is a broken machine. No, cleanup will take a lot more than throwing in some wild card entrepreneur and hoping everything will work out. But rather, this election was more a report card regarding the general mental status of the American public. Whether or not they were simply dumbed down livestock that takes what they are fed by politicians or media, or if they see through the BS and are willing to say enough is enough. Well, hmm. It seems that there are a few out there that voted against the bull, against government, against status quo. This is a curiosity because it is a double-sided coin here. For at the same time, this will both help and do nothing for male empowerment. You see, I knew no matter who got elected, it would incite 
further radical feminism, which will demonstrate females' innate nature and their true feelings towards males. Because if Hillary won it, she would have enacted a new level of feminist agenda, which would further degrade and enslave males to the feminine collective. And if Trump won it, this would deal a serious bitter blow to the man-hating female-worshipping community which would spur more division, more hatred of males, specifically white males, more radical feminist rhetoric and propaganda, and, in general, a deeper societal division with more venomous assaults on males. Well, the latter has happened, and you just watch the tone of bitter resolve by those who see this as another loss to the privileged patriarchy. This will mark a ramping up of male devaluation guaranteed. Even if you do not see it, females deep down feel slighted once again by males, and they are building even more venomous resentment against males, all males, and eventually the opportunity will be ripe for revenge, whether publicly in another election or interpersonally, where a wife or girlfriend treats a boyfriend or husband even more contemptuously because she cannot stand males in general, and so she takes out her misandry on the nearest available male, namely compared companions, or family members. Next, Trump getting in is not some victory because I didn't hear anything about male rights. I did not hear any campaigning about repealing circumcision or abolishing affirmative action for females or the appointment of justices that might finally clean up the very abusive divorce and family courts. I didn't hear any plans to help male homelessness or to fight male suicide. Now, maybe it's just me being silly, but the male plight has not changed. Yes, many will think that since the president-elect is a male, thus he will have male sympathies against feminism or male degradation in our society, and that all will be well in the land. However, all the political curiosity that is happening is merely a slight detour back to traditionalism Sure, superficially, he is successful, and for all intents and purposes, he appears to be alpha of the hill, which inspires confidence, just as a strong father figure inspires confidence. Yet alpha is a part of a paradigm that infantilizes females and thrives off male toil, labor, and sacrifice. Moreover, rich alphas have a different mindset. Because of their status, they have had their pick of females throwing themselves at them. So, they usually come to see females as accessories, toys for their usage. So, when it comes to the business of society, well, females are pretty to look at and to assist with ejaculation, but they can't rely on these two-faced, gold-digging female accessory toys. They need males to soldier and labor and maintain society. So, really, at the end of the day, the paradigm is still upheld. We use male life as fuel and we spare females, regardless of if you adhere to traditionalism or feminism. I am not trying to take the wind out of the sails of those who are celebratory over this. Those who think that males are back in business. But it is window dressing, for patriarchy is not advancement. It is simply more male expendability. And now we have traditionalism and feminism viciously clashing, both of which thrive on male disposability. So now the environment is more toxic to male welfare than ever. One thing this election has shown, and will continue to show through the sour grapes of the feminists out there, is that this country is divided over sex. This was a polarized election merely over sex. That reveals how right MGTOW has been all along. Everything is not cool. There is such a deep division along gender lines, and there has been for a long, long time. And now this rift is out in the open, and there will be fallout and venomous backlash on a cultural level between the sexes. That is the one thing that you can count on. Females will recruit more members by again playing the victim narrative of being oppressed, the underdog that the big, mean, privileged male establishment is trying to hold down from the highest office in the land. This was a very curious occurrence, and there are multiple things going on at once surrounding this historic upset and decision. There are gender wars, revolts against conventional establishment, against political correctness, statements of wanting someone to just come in and clean house, etc. But what I can tell you is that this has inspired an escalation in male devaluation. 
You see, Hillary still got the popular vote, meaning in the minds of the people, they favor females. And this is ultimately where I do battle, because this is where male devaluation and disposability reside, in the individual minds of people. So we need to be on our game and keep strong and resolute in our mission of male worth and sovereignty on individual personal levels, because there is a deluge of male contempt roiling and coming our way. I knew one thing all along, that no matter what, this election would escalate male contempt. And if you think that since Donald talked about grabbing Snapper in his locker room talk, that this proves that he's one of the guys and will have some pro-male agenda, yeah, well, <laughs> that's wishful thinking. But females are not going back into the kitchen. They are angry and they will become more resolute than ever to subjugate males to female supremacy. Indeed, so much can still happen. States could secede, Obama could declare martial law, or females could simply be more venomous to males in their individual lives and demand more simpering doormat servitude from dudes as penance for being male and oppressing females once again with this chauvinistic comb-over rich kid. Now, I am not all doom and gloom. There is cause for guarded curiosity over this historic decision. And maybe there are more level-headed people out there than we are told by the crooked media. I must admit, I am interested to see what precipitates from here. Yet, no matter what happens, until male life is valued equally to female life, my work is not done, and it will be business as usual here. However, mark my words, there is an escalation in male devaluation that has begun. It may not reach maturity for a week, a month, a year, but greater mistreatment of the collective male is coming down the pike, so do not let your guard down. It is simply small distractions like this that will cause males to weaken their defenses, and then the latent gynocentric programming lying in wait within your head will spring to life, and before you know it, you're dancing to the Pied Piper's flute once again. Remain strong and vigilant, my friends, for male expendability has not been erased by this election, nor does it relieve the burden of males around the world. This is not some vindication. We must soldier on. I understand many males are taking delight in this temporary smackdown of the feminist machine with their candidate who represented corruption in status quo governmental and societal dysfunction. But pay attention to the venomous aftermath and what it is demonstrating. There is a deeper, more bitter gender chasm occurring and the opposition is more determined than ever to squash the male plague. And you see this blatantly demonstrated since all the crying, all the vicious social media attacking of Trump supporters, all the rioting and unrest, this is all because they wanted a female in office. And they are seeing this as yet another example of patriarchy, another example of males oppressing females. Hence the symbolism of the glass ceiling at Hillary's election night headquarters, which was to symbolize breaking the glass ceiling placed over females, where females are told that they can reach for the stars, yet are not permitted to do so by males. Oh, this is creating bitter hatred and war on males. And the war on males will intensify. You can take that to the bank. You think all is well for male welfare because a white dude is back in office? Just remember, male disposability happened under male watch. And the increasing male devaluation of the last half century has all happened under male watch. No, my friends, we must not let our guard down because a bitter escalation looms ahead. Our work is just as righteous today as it was two days, two months, two years ago. My friends, remain strong, remain vigilant, stand with me, live free.